how to categorize the different hazardous chemicals into different types the very first type here is the flammable chemicals flammable chemicals the very first chemical here is the flammable gases that is the first category so if any gas which is just catching the fire in 20 degree celsius temperature and at a standard pressure and the 101.3 kilopascal so that particular gas is considered as flammable gas and this is ignitable when a mixture of 13% or less by volume with the air or have a flammable range with air of at least 12 percentage points regardless of the lower flammable limit so that particular gas can be considered as flammable so this is the limit or characteristic of the flammable gas provided in the document of this manufacture storage and import of the hazardous chemical rules of 1989 so i hope the first point is clear to you the second category here is the extremely flammable liquids so after the gases the next thing is extremely flammable liquids which have flash point lower than or equal to 23 degree celsius so what is the flash point here flash point is that point in that particular temperature that particular thing can uh, just catch the fire so that would be the flash point for that particular chemical or that particular liquid 23 degree celsius is for the chemicals of extremely flammable liquids and the boiling point of these chemicals is only 35 degrees celsius so you have to remember the name of the categories and these categories few very peculiar type of information you have to remember then very high flammable liquids after the extremely we have very highly flammable liquids which having the flash point of again equal to 23 degrees celsius but the boiling point is higher here more than 35 degrees celsius in the previous example this was less than 35 degrees celsius this would be very highly inflammable or flammable liquid then we have three more, more categories highly flammable liquids after very high we have highly flammable liquids it is having the plus point up to the 60 degree celsius but higher than the 23 so you can say that 23 to 60 degree celsius range that would be highly flammable then we have 60 degree celsius a solid or liquid or pyrotechnic substance or a mixture of substances which is in itself capable by chemical reaction of producing gas or such a temperature and pressure and at such a speed as to cause damage to the surrounding that would be called as explosive materials the explosive materials is designed to produce an effect by the heat light sound gas or smoke or a combination of these as the result of non detonative self-sustaining exothermic chemical reaction those all things would be considered as a type of explosive and here how flammability test is done flammability test is done under the two standards iso indian standard international standard organization 10156 and bureau of indian standards that is 1446 so here you should remember this So this is all about the flammability characteristic of the liquids and gases which are under the manufacture storage and import of the hazardous chemicals rule of 1989 similarly we have the batteries management and handling rules of 2001 what is this particular rule is saying so we have seen the epr already so that expanded producer responsibility so similar kind of rules are under this batteries management and handling rule of 2001 this rule shall be applied to every manufacturer importer reconditioner dealer assembler recycler auctioner consumer and the bulk consumer involved in the manufacture processing sale purchase and the use of batteries for their components battery here all uh, lead lead acid battery lead acid battery in which the lead and acid is used which is source of electrical energy and contains lead metal there so during the first year of the implementation of the rules 50 percent of the new batteries were sold so here this is the number of the used battery these are resolded again then during second year of implementation of the rule 75 percent of the new batteries are sold 
then after second year of implementation of the rules 90% of the new batteries which are sold which are made from the collected back batteries so this is how you can remember it and i hope this chart you can remember this is very important chart again i am saying all the standards are important here at least two questions you can find out in the examination which will have these type of values questions so you have to remember these questions very carefully these values very carefully if any question is asked so very few people in the whole examination can answer such questions so ready for that be ready for that then this is the noise pollution regulation and control rule of 2000 amendment in the year of 2017 was done and here ambient air quality standards in respect of noise is provided as i have told you the noise standards are under the ambient air quality standard already in the amendment year of 2017 so the category of area zone here you can see abcd starting from the 75 and go up to the 40 industrial have area have the 75 decibel limit in the day time 70 decibel limit in the night time commercial areas have 65 decibel during their areas are having even less than that 55 decibel during the day time 45 decibel during the night time and in the silence zone 50 decibel only during the day time and 40 decibel during the night time is allowed here you have to remember what is the meaning of day time and night time day time here cell means that from 6 am to 10 pm and night time cell means from 10 pm to total 6 am time period so this is how the noise standards are written you have to remember it multiple times in the examination in the past year papers also these standards has been asked so be ready for that remember this table very carefully so i hope you will remember this particular table easy so this is all about the till the noise pollution regulation and control rule of the 2000 the next thing that we have to discuss here is the public liability insurance act of 1991 and the postal zone regulation notification act 2011 we will start tomorrow today we will cover till, till this public liability insurance act of 1991 Now, what is this public liability insurance act of 1991? So just give me a second to think what. As in the name, you can see, this is public liability insurance act. It means any kind of. suppose a uh, miss happens is there and public is harmed so on that scenario you should have a particular kind of insurance to cover that particular damage which is caused by your industry your project anything so again the bhopal gas tragedy you can see that can be the precursor of this particular act as well in which the government thought that there should be at least insurance of all the damaged and the damaging property or damaged thing under this public liability insurance act of 1991 so the public liability insurance act of 1991 is to provide the compensation for the damages to the victims of an accident of handling any hazardous substance or it is also called to save the owner of production or storage of the hazardous substances from hefty penalties so here if any penalty would be there so that penalty would be covered for this whole public by this particular insurance act i hope you know the meaning of the insurance what is the meaning of insurance so you can take the insurance of the humans also you can buy the insurance of yourself so what is the meaning of insurance we take the health insurance we take the term insurance like in the health health insurance what you will do you will pay a few amount to the company maybe 4000 5000 3000 based on company to company and what you will deal with the company by paying such a small amount you will deal with that particular company that if anything health problem if uh, any health problem is taking place or maybe happening to me in the near future so 
up to the five lakhs of that particular treatment amount you will bear for me if anything happened to me so for that you have to pay premium to the company so that premium would be small amount three thousand five thousand if suppose anything happened to you in the one year term period that is from the taking of buying of the insurance state so if anything happened to you so up to the five lakhs of the five lakhs of the rupees of the treatment would be provided to you freely by the company and if suppose nothing happened to you no disease happened to you no problem happened to you on that scenario that premium is gone directly as a profit to the company similarly in the public liability insurance act of 1991 the companies or that particular factories will pay a few premium amount to the insurance company maybe few lakhs rupees maybe few crores rupees depending on again company to company the size of the company and the provider of the insurance based on that deal the few amount would be provided to the insurance company by that particular industry if suppose nothing happened to the next one year to that particular factory or company then that premium amount would be the profit of that particular insurance company if suppose anything happened to that particular company any kind of misfortune event you can say or miss happen in that particular industry suppose public is get damaged or public property get damaged any accident happen on that scenario all the compensation would be just paid by that particular insurance company not by the industry so that is what public liability insurance act is so this is the act of 1991 which provide compensation for any kind of damage to the victims to the peoples any kind of accident during handling of the hazardous substances so on that particular scenario the owner of the industry or the factory is not liable to pay any amount the insurance company they will check if everything was just natural or not so that is not human made kind of uh, scenario at least so if anything was found wrong then no premium would be paid no money would be paid to the victims if any any if everything was found natural and they look like a accident then only the insurance company will pay the penalty to such victims or such damaged property so any kind of death injury to any person just other than the workers for the workers different insurance have to be bought by the uh, universe, by, by that particular industry so this public liability insurance insurance act is only for the public not for the workers you have to remember that this is only for the public so any damage to the property by any accident the owner shall be liable to give such relief is specified in the schedule for such damage death or injury so that all compensation is provided by the insurance company so the owner of such facility must take an insurance policy how much amount of your insurance policy you have to take so that should be equal to the paid up capital now what is the meaning of paid up capital this can be asked in the examination the paid up capital should be the total net worth of the company how much that company is owning so suppose that company is owning 5 crores of the property so 5 crores of the insurance policy they have to take so 5 crores insurance amount is it means this is not that insurance company will take 5 crore from that particular company the premium of this would be very less maybe 1% 2% 3% 5 lakhs to 50 lakhs would be need to be paid to that insurance company if anything happened to that 5 crores of the damage amount would be provided by the insurance company so if suppose any company is having 60 crores of the worth so then only this paid up capital would be of only 50 crores not more than that so this was on also limit provided by the government so paid up capital amount should be anything less than the 50 crore if the company total net worth value or paid up capital value is more than 50 crore then also the company will take only the 50 crores of the insurance to meet the expenses of the relief if anything happened to that particular nearby people or public the district collector must verify such claim within the 3 months of receiving application of claim made within 5 years of accident suppose till date suppose uh, till till date means suppose now in the present time uh, suppose a person 
who was victim of the Bhopal gas tragedy. Want to take any kind of relief or compensation amount from the company. So now the Bhopal gas tragedy is almost 26 years old, almost 36 years old now, 1984 to 2020, 36, 38 years old. So now the compensation amount or that compensation relief is not provided to that particular person. Why? Because it is already having too much time. But in what situation the particular penalty or such claim can be verified? So it is written here. This is the rule book of the Public Liability Insurance Act. The district collector will subsequently first, the main thing here would be the DM. The district magistrate or the district collector verify such claim within the three months. So the district collector cannot take more than three months of time while he is or she is verifying such claims. So she, she or he have to go to the, that particular area or has to go to the that particular uh, place where that accident happens and they have to verify that particular accident was natural or what and after claiming that within the three months they have to provide compensation if the everything if everything is right there and if suppose if, if, if anything, anything is wrong there on that situation no claim would be provided and that is decided by the dm only district magistrate only and another thing is added here the claim should be within the five years of accident as I have told you right now, if anyone is asking any kind of compensation from the Bhopal gas tragedy accident, so that would be not provided. You have to claim to the district magistrate within the five years of happening of that accident. If it is more than five year older, then no such claim would be provided to you by the district magistrate. That would be directly cancelled by the district magistrate because happening of that event is older than five years. So this also you have to remember. So two very important things you have to remember here, paid up capital as well as the time duration for this particular type of damage divided by the, provided by the government. So I hope the Public Liability Insurance Act of 1991 is very, very clear to you. So this is all about the today's lecture and we can end up here this lecture as well. Only one lecture would be required to complete this particular unit. So that we will complete tomorrow in tomorrow's class. This unit would be completed. Tomorrow we will discuss the international laws, rules and regulations. Till now we have already seen all the Indian rules, laws, regulations and international laws and regulations under the United Nations that we have to see in the next class that we will cover in the next class. So I hope you enjoyed the lecture. This was all about this particular lecture. Thank you so much.